Namaste. Welcome to day number two. My life yesterday afternoon and evening turned into a real chaos. It's like the inner child took a hold of the wheel and wasn't letting go. <sighs> um, and that chaos spilled over into the evening. I ended up having just nightmare after nightmare last night. Did not sleep well. Woke up in this I just felt like I had some just burning, um, a lot of fear, a lot of real just insecurity and unworthiness, shame, you name it. I was in a just a deeply shadowy place. I was in the shadow. I was merged with it. I was identified with it. There was just like no space from it. It was just consuming me. I was believing my thoughts. Presence was nowhere to be found. Um, I was really in the little me, and that's just where I was. And sometimes that's where we find ourselves on the path. And I'm getting goosebumps as I say that because I, I feel like that's, uh, you know, my higher self, my guides feel like that's important for you all to know watching this. Sometimes we find ourselves in the little me just kind of trapped there, suffocated there, in the shadow, in our, in our own darkness. And the first thing, when we're there, it's just to bring so much forgiveness to ourselves, so much gentleness. Releasing any feelings of we're doing something wrong or we're fucking up spiritual awakening or any of the unworthiness that comes with that place of, you know, I, I'm not good enough or maybe God's abandoned me. I know a lot of my clients, they bring that to me of that feeling like God has abandoned them because they made a mistake or something. And this is all very common and, and it's, it's really important when we go into that place and when we're trapped in the egoic little me um, state of being, when we're believing all of our thoughts, our, our negative, when our negative patterns are coming up and we're identified with them, the first thing is gentleness. Just the consciousness of, oh, I'm identified with the little me. I'm just the consciousness to even be able to say, I'm trapped. To even realize that you are being consumed by your shadow. Just that level of awareness and consciousness is a gift. Like, incredible that you're able to even wake up to that level of awareness in this lifetime. How many lifetimes of work, of inner work, must you have done to even be able to say such a thing as, I'm just lost to my shadow today. I'm lost to the little me. I'm in identification with my negative patterns. Like, how much inner work do you, you, you must have, we must have been monks, you know, for lifetimes. We must have meditated for lifetimes just to be able to have, to wake up to that realization right there. And so just seeing, like, the level of awareness that's already blossoming and birthing within you even when you're in that place, because you know you're in that place, you know you're in that, that darker place. And then the next movement, once we are gentle with ourselves and easier and kinder with ourselves for where we are, once we're meeting ourselves where we are with love and compassion and gentleness, is to say, okay, what, what do I need right now? What does this inner child that won't let go of the wheel, what is this aspect of self need right now and for me this morning when I woke up I knew the first thing I, I the, usually the first thing I do is meditate and then shoot this video and today I knew I needed something different so the first thing I did is I went to a sauna and I just sweat and I just I knew I needed something real physical to start today and that can be really helpful I know this is a meditation vlog but sometimes it helps when we're in that um, when we're in a shadowy place to get real involved with the body uh, to get involved in the 3D, you could say. And so I went and had a sauna um, and a good sweat. And then I went to yoga, uh, a slow flow vinyasa yoga with this really gifted and beautiful like teacher. She's got like this, I mean, she's beautiful in all aspects, but I'm really pointing towards the beauty of her rootedness, her centeredness of 
her connectedness to her humanity. You know, she's very, um, she shines a bright light, but she also is a, so human, you know? And, and I have a, one of my teachers, Cesare, reminds me of this too. Cesare has such a bright light and she's such a big presence, but she's so human. And I think so many of us through this Kundalini experience, this awakening experience, we get so connected to the ethereal, to the energetic, to the subtle, that it can be difficult to integrate all of that into our humanity and to really be fully human, right? And so I knew I needed um, that kind of presence. I needed that kind of rootedness, uh, that kind of connection. So I went to this class with this, like I said, this amazing um, teacher. And there's, so, there's different directions here I'm feeling to go with this, but I'm just going to stick with this movement of that was very nourishing. That was very healing. Yoga... When I walk into the studio, I feel a mix of terror and excitement. I feel terror because I know I'm going to be confronted with big feelings. With, with so much, like it's like, God, when I go to these yoga classes, because it's, I'm, and, you know, I've done a lot of healing work with humans like this um, in the digital world. But because of the situation in the, in the world recently, I haven't done a lot of healing work with humans in the flesh. So it's so powerful and I'm so sensitive. I mean, if you're watching this, you're the, I know you're the same. We're just so sensitive. We're so ripped open, wide open, that connecting in the human, in the, in the, in the 3D, in the flesh, can be such a big experience energetically. And so that's why I'm so terrified when I walk into that yoga studio. I'm, I just know it's gonna be huge. And I know there's no, like this yoga studio, it has this very high frequency. And I think that's because it's the owner of it. She went to the Himalayas. She, I think she learned from, um, I don't know exactly her story, but she brings, what I'm saying is this yoga studio has a very high vibration. It has this healing vibration. So when you walk into the studio, there's no hiding. There, there's, it's just like everything comes up, you know, all, anything, like I walked in today um, and the, te the instructor asked, how are you? And I said, I'm okay. <laughs> and, and she just knew. She's like, you're just okay. She's like, what's going on? How are you really? It was like my inner child answered. <laughs> the, the one who still had the wheel walking into yoga class. He was like, okay. And he had this kind of vibe, you know. <laughs> and she was like, what's really going on? And so, yeah, going there, it's so healing for me. Um, but yeah, so there's like just so much terror that comes up because I know I'm going to have to feel these big feelings in front of other people in the flesh. And that's a new thing for me, right? I can feel them with my teachers through here in reach, both retreats I've done. They've been digital. So there's that terror of, oh my God, this is going to be huge. This is going to be hard. This is going to take me to my edge. Sometimes in yoga class, I, I'm... I just want to run out of the room, you know? I just want to be like, fuck this, this is too much. But in that moment, it's just connecting to the breath and allowing those feelings to arise. And that, and that moves, and that, that, that um, demonstrates why I'm so excited though too, because I know these feelings, it's like God's taking his, or you could say his or her hand and just pull, pulling out all the deeply rooted fear programs from my being when I'm in this yoga class. You're just oh, excavating them out. And so I'm excited because I know it's going to be, it's going to be deeply healing and cathartic and so much stuff that I wouldn't have access to by myself just meditating and listening to the silence. So many feelings have a chance to come up, to be felt, to be seen by the light. It's like I'm just sitting there and I just feel like I'm, I'm in these flames of terror and fear and so much shame is coming up. And, but there's this field holding the class. There's not only the light of the instructor that's seeing all of this come up, but it's everyone else in the in the class with me. We're all, it's like this field is connecting us and it's, so it's like all the stuff, it's like a safe container, a powerful yet safe container for so much energy work and energy healing to be done. And so that's what I needed right away today. I needed to connect to that kind of experience. And that was so, um, That was so hard. 
to be honest. I almost cried a few times because there were just such big feelings and so much pain coming up. It's like yoga, especially with really good instructors, when it's a slower flow and you're holding poses and, and you're just going so deep into the body, into where there's stuck energy, uh, especially if you've got kundalini flowing, anywhere there's blockages, a yoga class like that, it's gonna really bring stuff to the surface that sometimes we just can't get there in meditation. Um, so then after yoga, that's when I decided to go into the two-hour meditation, which I just finished. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, that first hour and 45 minutes was chaos. It was so much just kind of like wanting to be done with it. Ugh, this, why did I commit to 100 fucking days of this? Like, <laughs> like the mind was still there, so still so present, still so dominant. There was just some agitation, some boredom. Um, some doubt, like, am I actually going to be able to do two hours a day? Even some parts of me were like, is this good for you? <laughs> but then, like always, not like always, but a lot of times, it was just 11-11 right when I said that, I just melted. Something finally just surrendered and just was like, okay, we're here. Might as well stop fighting it. And it was hard to tell, but I, it seemed like that last 10 to 15 minutes, oh, so, I was just so melted into into the, you could say, the, the silence, the feel, to, mm, to just this essence, just this, like, you could say, I've heard some people say, like, this juicy life, <laughs> where it just feels so healing, and you're just floating, basically, and you can feel, like, your wounds in your body and getting so much healing, so much energetic support, um, you can feel, like, the hands of the divine and the hands of grace healing you when you get to this place in a meditation. And if you would have told me an hour and a half in that I was going to somehow just arrive in this place, because it's not like I did anything. It's not like I did this. It just showed up through sitting for so long. If you would have told me an hour and a half in that I would be having this incredible feeling of surrender, of deep, deep, cathartic surrender, I'd have been like, no way. There's no way that's going to happen in this meditation. There's just too much resistance. There's too much pain. There's too much, too much thinking this, all of this. But that's the way meditation is. You just never know. All of a sudden, you can just be in this different realm like that. You can just feel so surrendered, so immersed in your essence, in what you truly are. And it can just, like I said, just can seemingly happen out of nowhere. And that's what, I, that's what happened. And uh, the alarm started going off and I didn't even reach for the alarm. I was just feeling so good and I just kept sitting there and sitting there. <laughs> And just like drinking it in, drinking in the grace, like, thank you, I need this healing, I need this grace, I need this light. And so, that's what can happen, you know, when, when we are deep in little me, deep in shadow, and we bring compassion and gentleness and forgiveness there, knowing that this too is God, this too is grace, this is part of the path. And then from that place, from that movement, that inner, you know, kind of gentleness and compassion, we're able to shift to what do we need right now. And that what we need might be really hard to step into. It might be scary. It might bring up big feelings. But we, we move into it anyways, and we do that. And that can shift us. It can start to shift us back into this place of, well, I'll say, true mind, true self, presence, clarity. And I hope that this video helped to bring all of you some of that. Um, thank you for being here with me on day two. If you would like to support my adventures and this meditation, self-connection experiment, I will put a donation link below. I will put a link to book a session with me. Um, I will also put a link to join the email list. Thank you all so much. Much love. Namaste.